All right, guys, you're all welcome to the channel. Uh, I want to say Nakwana, Ibolachi, and a carol to every one of you watching this video from different parts of the country. I want to quickly inform you that we are having a WhatsApp, a closed WhatsApp group. And um, in the WhatsApp group, tomorrow we'll be having an online section, which is Wednesday. And on Friday, we're we'll we'll also going to be having another online section before your test day. So if you want to register to the if you want to be part of the WhatsApp group, you just have to make a payment of 2,000 error to the account number you see right here, and you send your screenshots of payments to the WhatsApp number on the screen. So with that being said, let us jump into today's video one step at a time. So today's video will be more on word problems, okay? More on word problems. Let's see how we can tackle word problems question in the NNPC absolute text. Remember, this is record four. All right, let's get started. It says, Mr. Kalada is three times as old as his son. Now, when they say Mr. Kalada is three times as old as his son, it means that if you know the son's age, you can actually predict the, the father's age. If the son is 10 years old, the father will be 30. That's three times of it. So now let's say this is the father's age. And here is the son's age. Now we're going to say, let the son's age be Y. Then if the son's age is Y, the father's age is going to be 3Y right because that is three times the father's age now three times the son's age sorry so if the son if the son is 10 years old the father is going to be 30 years old. that's three times of it i hope this concept is clear now let's read on it says after 15 years mr calabar will be twice as old as his son now 15 years time the the son is going to be the son's age is going to be y plus 15 right and the father's age 15 years time will be 3y plus 15, just an additional 15 years to their current age. That's how you get their age 15 years time. So now let's read on. It says, after 15 years, Mr. Kalada will be twice as old as his son. So at this very point, Mr. Kalada's age will be two times the son's age. That's how you can solve this problem. So how do you interpret that algebraically? So we know that the father's age is 3y plus 15. And that's going to be two times the son's age, which is two times y plus 15. So from this simple equation, you can get the value of y. And if you get the value of y, that is exactly the son's age. So let's distribute with two. Two times y is going to give us 2y, and two times 15 is 30. And here we still have 3y plus 15 in the left-hand side. Collect like terms, you have 3y minus 2y equal to 30 minus 15. And 3y minus 2y is exactly y, and 30 minus 15 is just 15. So that means the son's current age is 15. And uh, the father's age will be 45, of course, that's 3 times 15. So the answer is B. I hope it's clear. All right, let's go to question two. Question two, it says, Amakiri spent 125 naira for camera and some films. Now, take note, what she's, she's buying is just camera and film. So camera, if the cost of camera is C, and the cost of film is F. That will give us a total of 125 naira because that's what she spent buying a camera and the film. Remember, C is the cost of camera and F is the cost of film. So when you add these two sum, you're going to get how much she spent buying the two, the two items. Now, so C plus F is 125. I hope you understand how I get this equation. Now let's read on. It says the camera, now they're talking about the camera. The camera costs 100 more than the film. So what it means is that if the price of the film is 20 naira, the camera will be 120 naira, just an extra 100 naira. So if I want to write the cost of the camera, it will be the cost of the camera will be going to be F plus 100. Remember, F is the cost of the film. So if you get the cost of the film, add 100 to it, you get the cost of the camera. So, so now you see we have two equations. You call this one equation one, this is equation two. You can solve this simultaneous equation by substitution method. So I'm going to substitute equation two right into equation one. So instead of writing C in equation one, I'll replace it as F, F plus 100. So equation one is going to become F plus 100, then plus the F right here, F equal to one, two, five. Collect like terms, F plus F is going to give us two F and 125 minus 100. 125 minus 100 is the same as 25. Divide everybody by two, so that means the cost of film is just 12.5, right? 25 divided by 2 is 12.5. Now we know the cost of film. Can we get the cost of camera? Yes, of course, we can get the cost of camera. The cost of camera is just F plus 100. Now we know the cost of film. You place F with 12.5, F plus 
and plus 100. So you're going to get the cost of carbon to be 112.5. Now we get now we know the cost of the camera and also we know the cost of the film. Let's go back to the question. It says, what percent of the cost of the two items? The cost of the two items is 125 million, of course. So what percent is the cost of the two items did Anakari spend for the camera? So the cost of the two items is 125 million. We know that. And how much did she spend for the camera? That is just 112.5. So they just want us to convert this to percentage. I'm going to multiply this fraction by 100%. So 112.125 is going to give me 0 0.9 times 100%. So when you multiply 0 0.9 by 100, you're going to, be, you're going to have uh, 90%. So that is option B again. I hope this one is clear. So let's quickly go on to question three. All right, question three is talking about average or averages. And now we done it says the average weight of a class. Let me quickly tell you what average is. Let's say I have one, I have three, I have seven, and it says you find the average of this number. Just what you do is you sum the numbers, which is one plus three plus seven, and you divide by the number of the number, which is just three of them. That's how to get average sum over the total number you're summing. So take have that in mind. That is average. Average is equal to this sum over the number of items you're summing. So it says the average weight of, of a class of 24 students is 36. No, this is this is an error. It should be 36 kg or whatever. 36 kg. So the average weight of a class, well, let's say average, remember, is equal to sum over the number of items you are summing, right? So the average now is given to us. The average is uh the average weight of the 24 students. The average is 36. We got the average to be 36. But we don't know the sum. We don't know the sum of those um, weights of students. But we know that there are 24 of them. We are summing their weights. So let me just recap on this. Average is just the sum, the, the sum over the number of things you're summing. So the sum of the weights of the students is not given to us. But we know that there are 24 of them, right? So we just keep the sum unknown. Now, so from here, you can easily get the sum. When you cross and multiply, uh, kindly do 36 times 24. So we get the sum to be the sum 36 times 24. It's 864. So that means the sum of the weights of those 36 of uh, those 24 students is 864. So we know the sum of their of their weights, right? Now let's read on from here. It says when the weight of the teacher, now we're including the weight of the teacher. Uh, when the weight of the teacher is also included, the average weight increased by one kg. Remember, the average weight was 36 before. Now, when you include the weight of the teacher, it's increased by one kg. That it will now become 37 kg. So remember, average is simply the sum over the number of items you're summing, right? Now, remember, we are, we, are, we are adding the weight of the teacher in this new average now. So the average is now 37 right? Because they said it increased by one kg. So the average weight is 37. And the sum will be um, the sum of the student plus the teacher. So we know the sum of the weight of the student is 864 plus the teacher's weight, which we don't know. Let's call it Y. All of our, how many people are we summing their weight? The 24 students and the teacher's weight. That will give, give us a total of 25, right? Now from here, you can find the value of Y straight up. You can find the value of Y you just have to cross and multiply. So very quickly, 37 times 25 is what? 37 times 25 is what? 7 times 925. And here we have 864 times y times 1 is going to give us 864 plus y. So you collect like and this one come over to this side. So you have 925 minus 864. 925 minus 864. So you see that y is equal to 61. And what is y? Remember, y is the weight of the teacher. And that's what they want us to find. The weight of the teacher is 61 kg. I hope this concept is clear. So the answer to this question is C. All right, let's move on to question four. All right, now question four is talking about still word problem. I told you this whole question you're doing in this video will be word problems only. Question four it says there's a pole in a lake. There is a pole in a lake. One half of the pole is in the ground. Now, let me draw the pole so that we see pictorially what this problem is talking about. This is the pole. 
and they said one half of it is in the ground. Let's say this from here to this point is one half. So this is the ground level. And uh, they said again, another one third of it is covered by water. This is one third of it. This region is water, all right? And what else again? They said 12 feet is out of the water. Well, let's take the problem once again. It says, what is, the total, what is the total length of the pole in feet? Now, you can see it's clear that we don't know the total length of the pole. So let's say the total length of the pole is y. Total length of the pole is equal to y. y feet. Let's put it clear. y feet. So if one half of the, now see the problem it says one half of the pole is in the ground. So that would be like one half of the total length, right, is in the ground. So that's one half of y is in the ground, clear? Remember, the total length is y. So one half of it is in the ground. That's, that's how we say one half, one over two y is in the ground. One half of y, that is half of the total is in the ground. Then the next is saying one third of it is covered by water. This is the water region. So one third of the total length of the pole is covered by water. That is one over three y is covered by water. And lastly, they said 12 feet is, is out of the water. So the distance from year to year is just 12 feet. So what do you observe? When you sum the 12 feet and this guy and this guy, that will give you the total length of the pool. So let's do it together. 12 feet plus one, let me move the feet, it's not necessary. So let's say 12 plus uh, one over three y plus one over two y will give us the total length of the pool, which is y. I hope that concept is clear. Now, from here, you can easily get the total length of the pole with the access to find, and that is y. So, collect like terms. Uh, we're going to see that 12 is equal to y minus 1 over 3y minus 1 over 2y. And uh, from this very point, I like to multiply both sides by 6 to get rid of this fraction. So, if I multiply these guys by 6, I have 6 times 12, I have 6 times y, then I have six times one third of y and i have lastly six times one half of y so let's do it um, straight up six times 12 is 72 six times y is six y um six three cancel out six so you have two two times y is going to give us two y and two cancel six you have three three times y is going to give us three y and six y minus two y is four y minus three y is y so that that you observe that 72 is just equal to y and y is the length, the total length of the pool. And that is option E. Now, the last question, uh, oh, that's just the last question. That is the last question. That's the last question. All right, you just have only four questions to solve. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed the class, kindly subscribe for more videos like this. See you in the next class. Bye-bye.